Uh, I am now happy to begin our program celebrating manufacturing. While many of you already know Don Creighton, today she attends her first chamber breakfast in her new role as the Chief Workforce Development Officer for Greenfield Community College. And because we believe in just throwing people right into the deep water here in Franklin County, <laughs> she will moderate our panel discussion this morning on only her fifth day on the job. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so delighted that you're here and truly excited about continuing to collaborate with you because we've been actually doing it already for a, a number of years. Um, in this new role on issues relating to workforce and economic development, welcome. Thank you. Um, two little housekeeping notes before I start. I have my phone with me, not because I'm going to be checking messages, but because there's not a clock and I want to keep us on time, because time is very important to me. The other note is I'm just going to grab My allergies are wreaking havoc, so if I end up in tears, it's not that I'm this emotional about today, it's allergies. But I am very excited to be here, but it certainly wouldn't bring me to tears of that nature. I cried a little bit before. A little bit, yeah. Good morning, Franklin County. Thank you, Diana, for that lovely introduction. I am so excited to be here with you today. Imagine my delight and surprise the day I received the call from Diana. Dawn, I know it's your first week at GCC. You might be a little bit busy. But would you want to mod be the moderator for our October manufacturing breakfast? Mind you, only 30 seconds earlier had I sent her a text sharing that I'd accepted the opportunity <laughs> as the Chief Workforce Development <laughs> Officer at GCC. Now, let's face it, you all know you can't say no to Diana, <laughs> nor would I have passed up this opportunity. I hope every single one of you will come up to me after this breakfast and ask how I can help you with your recruiting and retention needs. We have a variety of programs on non-credit side. My goal is to add more for you. Last year alone, we graduated 54 students from our manufacturing program, 34 from our CNA program. We, when we served over 3,400 registrants. What are your needs? Let's talk. I joined the GCC team after 10 years with AIM as the Western Mass Director, supporting the entire 413, meeting with CEOs who wanted to double their business but couldn't find the staff. HR that were pleading to find creative ways to hire. In my role with AIM, I was able to listen to companies compassionately. In my role, I was able to listen to companies compassionately make some connections to staffing agencies or other resources. I'm a problem solver at GCC. We will build the training to be that problem solver. I look forward to working with each of you. Let's get Franklin County working. Oh, let's not forget we have some personal enrichment classes as well. Anybody want a yoga? How about a ukulele class? Maybe if I took the photography class, we might have to stop taking selfies. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> Enough about me. Let's get started with this panel. We have a terrific slate of manufacturers here this morning. We are joined by Jeff cool, Jim Cool George, the Chief Manufacturing Officer at Judd Wire. <laughs> Gary Chavez, the Director of Operations from Pelican Products. Mary St. Germain, the Vice President, Sales Marketing for Beat Fog Nozzle. And we are also joined by Patricia Crosby, the Executive Director for the Mass Hire Franklin Hampshire Workforce Board. At this time, I'd like to give each of our manufacturers a few moments to speak about their business, the economic impact you have in Franklin County, and please include how many employees you have. Let's start off with Jim Cool George from Judd Wire. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting me today. Uh, Judd Wire was established in 1953, currently uh, located on Turner's Road. Road and Turner's Falls. Um, we have approximately 275 associates in our facility here, uh, another 30 in our uh, satellite facility in uh, North County, San Diego, uh, San Marcos, California. Uh, Again, we were established in 1953, 1988. We were acquired by Sumitomo Electric Industries. I think many people are aware of the Sumitomo name generally, but our current company is about $30 billion uh, worldwide uh, manufacturer of specialty materials, wire harness for automotive. Uh, our business is uh, 
special the electronic wires and cables for the automotive industry, aerospace industry, and specialty electronics. So thank you very much for having me. Travis, health products. Thank you, thank you, Gary. And welcome. I understand you're new to Franklin County as well. I am. This is um, uh, this is my third week in Franklin County. Working for Pelican, so this was uh, less than surprising for me. I'm just kidding. I have seen already. Yeah. 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 You all probably know it as Harding Industries, um, prior to Pelican purchasing the party in, I believe, 2010, uh, we're in South Deerfield. We produce primarily all protective um, cases for commercial, uh, government, uh, and consumer applications. Uh, in South Deerfield, in the operation we have oh, about 450 um, associates. We've got a global footprint, the home office being in North California. Uh, there's also another operation out in Minnesota, and we do have a um, footprint in Australia and in Europe. So, um, uh, I'm just kidding, I've been in the three weeks. Um, and so I can't go into too much about the company, although I love the culture, it's a wonderful operation. Anyone wants to do it, so we can do it right now. If you get the chance, definitely take it for it. It's so much fun. I went through with Representative Natalie Blaze, who's here from the border. We had so much fun. We got a great tour. I mean, you just cannot believe what goes into making a cooler, a briefcase, the size of the equipment. There was over 300,000 square feet there, and, and you just don't think about it when you see that pretty little sign in the, in the front of the building. And then they have this test room where they show like how they test the products. It was so cool. We just wanted to drop everything. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. All right, now we'd like to hear from Mary St. Germain of the Fog Novel. Hi, I'm Mary St. Germain with the Fog Novel. We are a beauty company that's located in the industrial park. And we manufacture and plant spray molds. Um, usually, when we say what's for beat, people will think we're making all the bugs into the hose. And they're not. Um, I brought an example to one of our newest patented innovations and cleaning novel. Um, so, we have uh, research and development capabilities, we have spray labs, and we have the capability of design engineering, applications engineering, and building markets. We have about 203 people right now. Uh, we're working on three ships. We also have a German subsidiary that has about 13 people as well. Uh, we were founded in 1950 by John B. Um, happy to still family owned and third generation of family owned ships from the new family. Um, in terms of our economic impact, we have about a million dollars a month in payroll um, that pays the and we also spend about a million dollars a year to work for the services Our key industry, most of our business is exported, but we export right now, 30% on domestic sales. Key markets for us are petrochemical, chemical, food processing, and pollution control. Um, and we have probably 10,000 different products that we offer in those markets. From simple spray nozzles uh, to a complete uh, spray system, to be nozzles on the kids with people uh, on the tightening. Thank you, Mary. And now I would like to ask Susan Crosby to speak about the incredible work of the Mass Hire Franklin Hampshire Workforce Board. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And thank you to the Chamber for um, having me on this panel. I am really um, uh, delighted to be able to talk about the manufacturing skills initiatives for this region. Um, 
This has been in place since about 2012, as some of you know, it was at that time that 10 or 12 area precision machine manufacturing companies um, got together and decided they really wanted to uh, upgrade the Franklin County Technical School shop to turn it into a state-of-the-art shop um, where they could um, uh, do, teach advanced manufacturing to those students coming through during the day. Um, we were really appreciative that those employers, our wonderful community banks that supported them and other business leaders, listened to members of the workforce board who said, we really uh, use having that shop open at night, late afternoon and evening, to train adults in this region who would be missed the chance early on to get into manufacturing and would really like to now. Um, so they helped us expand and extend that program, and with leadership from Greenville Community College, the technical school, uh, the board, the career center, um, so many members of the community um, helped us project in place. Um, it's now graduated, let's see, 150 people, I think, yeah, 150 graduates, um, with more than 80% of them placed in jobs with local companies. Um, it is um, the current starting wage um, that we're seeing is $18.50 an hour, which is well above um, the average wage of the region, entry level wage. Um, the best thing about these jobs is that they have um, not only potential for, um, you know, you can get this job without necessarily having any post secondary education except that short term training program, which is really useful to get you in there. Um, and you can also advance in this job. So you can start at a higher wage and you have opportunities in pathways within these companies to advance your skills, advance your pay, and really make a career out of it. Um, and so we were very proud of it. Um, if you get off the Greenfield Rotary, I think the billboard is uh, still there um, advertising the project. You'll see Andrew Baker, our project coordinator, who's been the leader of the project in recent years. Um, uh, wanted to tell me the story of this uh, young woman on that billboard. Um, you think she was an advertising model, but she's not. She's an example of somebody who is not in manufacturing, went through a 12-week uh, program, increased her the wage she had from her prior job, job by a third, um, and now is on a career track within a local company. Um, we would like to see many more women in this, in this program, and, um, and I urge you to talk to us if you have people you think might be interested. Um, and we just think uh, it, what's great about it is that it's, it seems to have served the employment community well, and we look forward to working with both the technical school and the community college and how we can continue to grow and expand it. Um, but it also is serving job students in our region really well. It really provides opportunities for people with many wonderful success stories. take a moment and talk about your workforce and specifically where you're finding your employees and the opportunity your company offers employees and the challenges you face with respect to the workforce. We always talk about recruiting. I'd love to also hear what you're doing for retention. Let's start with Mary and then we'll go right down the line. Um, <laughs> Uh, one of our challenges uh, that we've been growing significantly is the average about six new hires per month over the past year. Uh, so we've been very lucky. Uh, we've done a lot of work with various agencies uh, in the county to actually get the word out. And then we go to the high school, we work with GCC, we work with a lot of local programs to get the word out. We've also had a lot of fun uh, hiring lately. Uh, one of our biggest challenges is the aging of our workforce. 25% of our employees have over 20 years of experience, and 25% of our employees have less than two years of experience. Um, so that's a big challenge for us as people are retiring and we're going to uh, transfer the knowledge to the future employees. Um, one of the difficulties that we found is attracting people to this area. We found that if we hire from outside the area, we find that they don't stay with us. Um, so we really try to make a, an effort to have people within the area that can be tough finding the people with the higher technical skills. Um, I know Tom Fitch, our president, has been working with the GCC, Future Work Advisory Council. Uh, we also work with MSNBC, uh, UMass, and WCI. Oh, 
stand before I see anywhere, everywhere in the state, we have the same basis. How do we attract talent? How do we retain them? Now, how do we fill in the gaps? Because as you know, the workforce, even in our place and other places that I work, is aging. We're
quality skills. Really, uh, that, that's another uh, discipline in the region, and I'd like to, again, the entire Western Mass region that is uh, in, in really, really short supply. So, uh, if you have uh, kids who are interested in uh, embarking in college, uh, quality engineering, I can tell you that's a, that's a, a, a great uh, field to get into right now because there's a real big gap down there. Your agency tackles these issues head on. Can you elaborate on how Franklin County can best position itself to places that offer employers a robust workforce and offer employees quality jobs and work the road? Well, the best way we can position ourselves for that is to engage those employers. I mean, I think that that was the secret of success of this program has been the fact that it was employers that saw the need and that um, looked to community partners to help them address that need. Um, that look to community partners to help them address it. And they built it um, with those partners in such a way that it could be sustained over time. Um, they were terrific advocates um, for us at, uh, with the legislature. Um, and um, I, I think that that's, that's one of the ways, is that um, the employers can uh, work with the community and stay invested over a period of years to build something that really works. Diana, that surprised you. Okay. We're going to open the separate questions. Huh? <laughs> Anybody have a question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. Hi, I'm Carrie Anderson from the Mass Fire Franklin Hanford Career Center. I'm just curious, this is a question for Gary. Uh, when you talk about the gaps that you're filling in with automation, can you say more about specifics of what those gaps are? So, in, in our operation, there are lots of, really, they're, they're, they're repetitive, <laughs> low-skilled, you know, tasks that we should be automating and using an associate to do the harder work, you know, the more hard the skills stuff. There are lots of those all over our um, So, we want to use the robots or collaborators. Uh, an employee should go chase a part, for example, let the robot go and pick it and bring it over to the uh, area. The other part for building the gap that I think that's mentioned is if we're limited to some contracting, your feature supply chain locally there are several machine shops and fabrication centers that we're starting to reach out to. Um, I can't find enough employees to staff three shifts. So I'm working with partners locally uh, with another In our case, um, you know, we're in the process of replacing a lot of aged equipment, which we've gotten quite a bit of value out of. Uh, but uh, machine design has changed drastically, and we're looking for opportunities to take a, an operation, for example, that is you know, one operator running one machine uh, to one operator running four or five machines. Um, different set of skills because again, the operator is interacting with the uh, with the, the process differently, uh, and also in the process looking to make the operation safer, uh, less strain on the the body and, and take uh, a lot of the, the real challenging uh, physical work out of the process, which is uh, again a core values of uh, improving safety. And it also, uh, you know, if anyone who's worked in a, a manufacturing plant for 35, 40 years, um, eventually it, you, you, it gets very, very difficult and it really takes a toll on your body. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking to um, automation or, or equipment uh, improvement. Um, this question is for Mary. You had said um, that when you hire people from outside the area, they tend to leave. And we at the Chamber, of course, are working to increase the quality of life and make it an attractive environment for employees to come. What are the chief reasons people leave? I mean, I could think, well, their family's not here, but local people here, obviously. Do they say anything like, I'm just so big lifestyle here? Or 
I think uh, what we've heard is that we thought of, so if you're hiring younger people um, that like the city, uh, if you're hiring, you have to have some capacity for you to get the outdoors and nature. Um, but if you're looking for the hustle and hustle in the city, um, they take the job, but then they realize it's not really the environment that they want to live in. So, you can really try to find people to work for. It's gratifying to know that uh, manufacturing is alive and well. I think that the myth that uh, manufacturing is dead in trying to come. So I appreciate all of your efforts. Um, I think one of the keys is getting in touch and telling stories to superintendents and guidance counselors because um, they seem to concentrate on college and um, other entry level jobs. But I wondered if any of you are um, seeking out to make that message known to the school system. I can make it I know our HR um, efforts are definitely to get uh, the tech schools with work. You're absolutely right. Um, you're absolutely right. Uh, more people, for some reason, they're pushing them to college where there's some really high paying jobs in tech schools, whether it's electricians, HVAC, um, you know, so. Tech schools, are, I think, are now becoming a little bit more attractive to high school or graduating uh, students. Um, so yeah, we're, we're encouraging the tech schools, but really that's that's where we're trying to go. And I think our uh, need is to bring the field, trying to touch base with all the tech schools. Well, I think we need to talk to local Another of the question over here. I just want to throw in a plug for if you haven't seen, um, Business West has a publication called Cool Stuff. It's a publication that's targeted specifically to middle school and high school students to talk about the cool stuff that's made in the 413. There was an article from Peerless Precision that they talked about a piece that they made that went into the scope that found the Boston bomber. And like high school kids go, wow, that's where you cool. <laughs> So there's, um, I have a couple of questions. Two of them have already been asked, so been answered mostly. So uh, corporate training is my background, skills training, adult training. Um, but so I'm, I'm interested in the types and the way in which you do do your training. Is it peer to peer training where you're transferring knowledge? Or do you have training departments? Uh, what is what is the what is the culture of training and development in, in, in your um, respective businesses? And the second part of Great Minds Running the Same Channel, I had Anne's same question. I, you're focusing on uh, tech schools, and I, I think you are missing an opportunity in, uh, in the secondary schools in Franklin County because there's one of your better opportunities to attract those students that want to um, stay in the area because they already know the area and don't necessarily relish the city, but there's a gap there. So I think what you're saying is uh, you need the local public schools, non-technical schools, to work with you in some capacity to create uh, some sort of curriculum that funnels them into a, a, a greater desire and a vision of the possibilities. Is that is that correct, or what are your outreach uh, activities beyond tech schools? Who wants that one? <laughs> <laughs> I'll start the training. Yeah. Uh, so we do uh, mostly peer-to-peer -peer training. We also work with Mass and a lot. They have a lot of uh, workforce training grants that are built to the state for most of the sales and marketing training grants um, through Mass and AP. We also use them for other workforce development grants. Yeah, I work for Mass and AP and even AP. Our training is in the mix.
mix of it is your manufacturing, but half of that <coughs> training has to be the how you work with us, the leadership part, the soft skills, along with you know your hard skills, how you do manufacturing, uh, blueprint reading, um, all these kind of skills. So, so you really do need to balance that um, with your employees. Uh, you, you're right. I don't. I don't know that anybody has. On the second part of the question, I'm not sure how the manufacturers or you know local employers have gone into the high school level um, and started touching base with them. I don't know the answer to that, but it's absolutely important to start the foundation. I appreciate the input because, frankly speaking, like we've all focused and, and other businesses in the area focused on the technical school, which is an excellent resource. We have a co-op program that we do with them. We, we give them jobs and they, uh, they do great work for us. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's definitely a high point, but yeah, there are other avenues and potential avenues for us to, uh, to cultivate potential future workforce. In terms of our business and, and training, we, we have a mix, certainly, uh, Operator uh, training is is peer to peer. We have uh, we use uh, hands on as well as a lot of uh, e learning type of training, um, both uh, for uh, manufacturing manufacturing support positions, and then uh, for higher level things. We, we also have access to a corporate training system through Western uh, Home Electric, uh, which is quite well developed. Uh, but what we what we lack and what we uh, pursue outside is. Uh, or problem solving skills training. And uh, it's shocking to me, frankly, that uh, some of our engineers who go to four year degree programs <laughs> really, you know, they, they, they understand mechanical engineering, electrical <coughs> engineering very well. And, you know, at, at basic levels, or at least solving problems is what engineers do. But things like process failure mode and effects analysis, uh, AD, 5Y analysis, is, is not core problem solving skills. Are really lacking, and we use outside uh, uh, services. You know, we, we hire people to come in and do that. that training for them. So, at the beginning of the program, we have the chamber introduced our new school to career coordinator, Jane uh, Degree, over at this table. Um, if that is a perfect way for you as employers and any other employers out there to connect with not only the technical school but all the other secondary schools. Um, the, the whole purpose of her job is to make business connections between teachers, guidance staff, and students in area high schools. So she has the high schools in Franklin County. We have another person working in Franklin Hampshire County. They have career days. They have career panels. It's a matter of you all knowing, you know, recognizing who's calling and you know, um, responding with a representative that can attend those. Because I really think that there's a great potential to get this news out to. Senior, senior level students who might say they're going to college, but act in actuality, if you checked in with them the following fall, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't fall through it. Now they're just kind of out there. So making that connection the spring of your senior year is so important. So what a small world. Janine and I graduated from school together. We're really working very closely together. So it comes full circle. Like, how about that? That's the benefit of staying in the community that you grew up in. And now I'm sad to say we have run out of time. I wish to thank all of the panelists. Thank you for your generous gift of time today. And thank you, Diana, for allowing me to be part of this exciting morning. I look forward to working with all of you. Please come and take my card. Let's get together soon and enjoy the weekend.